Good morning, everyone. This is the July 14th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. And thank you, everyone, as always, for getting up and going on to Zoom so early on Friday morning. Seeing we have a quorum, I'm going to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. And I want to note that Mike is with us. We're wonderful to have him back. <laughs> and he can only be with us for a short amount of time, so we may reverse some items on the agenda to get to the, the items that we need to vote on. Um, but first, I want to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. And I'll just call out your name. Sean? Here. Paul? Present. Rupert? I'm here. Mike? Here. Jonathan? Here. Simone? Here. Fantastic. OK, and I'm just looking. Allison is coming on. So Allison, I just called out names. Can when you can unmute, could you make sure we can you can hear us and we can hear you? Tammy is here as well. Uh, Tammy is here as well. Tammy. Hi, Kathy, I hear you. Okay, Tammy. Yes, good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, I love love total enthusiasm. <laughs> so we we are now we are now a uh, uh, significant quorum. So if it makes sense, Mike, we, Margaret, I'm turning it over to you to figure out whether we go to uh, first the uh, invoices. Um, yeah. So and the budget. Because, because yeah. there's a vote required and because Mike is short of time this morning, I'm going to reverse the order. So we're going to start with this item seven, which was added to the agenda earlier this week where I'm gonna make a brief presentation on the materials that were sent out um, that summarized the recommended fees for ANSWER and DENISCO. And then we do have four invoices that are tied to those agreements. So I'll try to make it snappy so that we can spend at least a little bit of time on, des on design issues with Mike here. So first I'm gonna to go to the memo that I sent. So um, I'm not gonna go through this in detail, but um, I think that I'm gonna just sort of dwell on a couple of important nuggets. So in this um, document, I noted that um, there is, a, uh, we are, the feasibility phase is complete and has been completely billed. And there is an amount of money about a little over $88,000 that will not be billed to the money that was, of the money that was appropriated, and that will be used to reduce the cost to the town and lower the amount to be borrowed. Um, so now, having started this next phase, and this is pretty common, we're sort of playing catch up on getting the contracts executed. So um, both Zanisco and ourselves prepared proposals that were reviewed by um, Paul and Sean, and we had some back and forth. They had questions that we responded to. And we have settled on this recommendation, um, which I am making to you for your consideration. So um, the what I did in this document is I compared what was in the total project budget to what is actually being proposed. Um, in, in our case, it's a little bit less because we were able to find some savings to NISCO. I basically use the number they have proposed, so it's the same. And then there's a big chunk of what are called reimbursables, which are listed down below, which are tasks which are unique to this project and therefore they aren't considered that part of basic services. So the total of all of those fees is a little over $9 million. Um, you know, a big, a uh, question that um, Sean and Paul had, and I'm sure you would have too, is how these fees um, sort of fall with regards to others. Unfortunately, the MSBA does not publish this data and it's been pretty hard to find. I did find a couple of um, points of reference. Historically, um, before the recent run up in construction costs of the last few years, um, the typical benchmark had been three and a half percent for the OPM and 8% um, for the architect. And sorry, 8%, yeah, 10%, 10% for the architect. So um, the <clears throat> now, of course, with construction costs going up so much, you would not expect those numbers to be at that level and they're not here. So the OPM fee is about 3% 
and Danisco is about 8%. And that is inclusive of everything that we can currently anticipate. You will remember that there is a quote unquote soft cost contingency. So if something comes up, in the process of the project, there is a pot of money that can be used to pay for those things. Um, but that's kind of the, the kind of super short survey. I also included a list here, and I'm not going to go through them all, of all the things that are reimbursable expenses, which include, you know, just to hit a couple important ones um, here, I think it's the some fees that are associated with, it, with the geothermal system, you know, ground source heat pumps as well as the solar, and in this case, also some um, work associated with the peer review process that is part of the town's bylaw and for which this project is the guinea pig. So um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I'll stop and take questions, but I do just wanna point out the contract, the contract language for both contracts is an MSBA standard that is we are given, we can't modify it. But if you're interested in looking and seeing what's in those contracts, I provided those links in the memo. So I'm gonna stop talking for a minute and just ask if anybody has any questions about that because I think what would probably be appropriate here is to take, for you all to take a vote on this and then we can take a second vote on the four, the four invoices. So does anybody have any questions? I am not seeing any hands, and Phoebe, whose hand I usually miss, is not here, so, okay. So, um, does someone want to make a motion about accepting uh, these fees for the project? Sure, I'll make a motion to accept these fees for the project going forward. I will second it. Okay, so, Kathy, do you want to call the roll, or would you like me to do that? Um, I think I, I have to, so I will do it. <laughs> okay. Okay, if you, you want to take it down, Margaret, just so I can uh, yeah, go back. Uh, absolutely. Make sure I don't miss anybody. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to call out people's names in the order I see them. That's easier for me. Sean? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Mike? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Allison? Yes. Simone? Yes. It is unanimous with several people absent. So Margaret, we'll, we'll make it. Angelica, Alicia, and Phoebe Nissel, right? That's correct. Okay. And Ben. And Ben, right. Okay. So okay. I just want to count, count four absent. Okay. okay. All right. So then now I'm going to take the screen again. Um, and I'm gonna, we're just gonna look quickly. So there's four invoices that are related to this that I will again, scroll quickly through. So I'm gonna first look at the Denisco invoices. Um, and I just, so here is their invoice for the end of May. And I'm gonna go to the bottom and just point out that what they are um, billing for here. Nothing for May, the next one has, um, yeah. Jim. So here is the request for this period is really part of their basic services. So it's 297,800. And um, attached to that is the, the backup paperwork that is required. And they're uh, reporting on workforce participation. The second invoice they have, um, to, just to go to the bottom, uh, oh, wait a minute, this looks like the same invoice. 6.30. Yeah, the, sorry, the first one was May and this one's June, but I imagine that uh, with a designer, it's gonna be sort of a flat equal increment yeah, for, for each exactly. month of design development. That's right. So, uh, sorry, let me go on the right page here. So yeah, so same same amount. So here's last month's, here's this one's 297, 800. And then um, there's no billing yet for reimbursables. So the, the answer invoices are definitely uh, sort of smaller than that. So our invoice for, uh, this is our invoice for June services is 12,540. And as always, we have this kind of detailed 
billing that spells that out and our invoice for, I pulled up two July invoices. So this is another invoice that is for June services. And this one is 6,770. Again, a couple of pages of hourly billing. So, so those are the four invoices. So I'll just point out, so from this point forward, we actually get reimbursed some of our costs. Um, <laughs> to this point, everything's been completely on the town, but now since we're in that next phase, um, we do get reimbursed. So once we pay these, we can turn around and submit them um, through the MSBS ProPay website, and then they'll turn around and start giving us back um, some money uh, so that we can kind of, they pay us as we go throughout the project. So, so just know that we'll start getting some money back for these. And can I just ask, all of those are on in this new period. None of those were the that for, even that first one wasn't. Yeah, we're we're done with the um we're yeah. done with the last period. Um, so yeah. we're all we're completely past feasibility and schematic, and now into design development. Yeah, that's that's why they are for because we held them until you all could understand the context of the the fees. So, so are there any questions or other comments on this? Otherwise, I will make a motion to approve all invoices as presented. Second. Um, approved and seconded. Um, I will, I, I meant to call on myself before to Margaret. I was a, yeah. a yes on the contract. <laughs> so Sean. Yes. Paul. Yes. Rupert. Yes. Mike. Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Allison? Yes. And Simone? Yes. It's unanimous with four absent. And I am checking attendees every now and then, but Great. number is there. All right. We okay, are. Okay, so now we will go back. I'll just pull it up again briefly to remind everybody of the rest of the agenda, which is the good, the good stuff. So, um, it, this is going to turn this over to Danisco to make some presentations on the that are kind of updates from the sub the subcommittee meetings, and well, then we'll kind of close with talking about the timeline. So, Tim, Donna, Rick, and Benian, the floor is yours. And I'm turning it over to oh, there he is, Tim. Tim. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I am going to share some of the presentation materials from the subcommittee meetings that we. Um, had this week and we can talk about where we are and uh, based on the discussion that we had what we are going to look at in the immediate future. So, um, one second. Uh, all right, my screen should be up looking at the west elevation, uh, the entrance of the building. Uh, we had a good discussion about um, following up on previous meetings about extending the um, color that we're using at the main entrance canopy to the administration roof line to sort of amplify that effect and the material that we're going to use to achieve that. Uh, we recommended uh, continuing to look at um, the use of a, a composite metal panel when we had samples of it at the meeting that will allow us to do a, a crisp geometric edge that sort of renders the way this images uh, some of the other materials, be it masonry or single skin metal panel would end up looking like a, a kit of parts. And so we feel that if we use this uh, judiciously at the, at the right areas, you know, um, it it's uh, the cost will be worth it uh, in terms of uh, the expression of the design that people have sort of commented on it favored, uh, and we will continue to look at this. Uh, as you also see in this West Elevation, um, the continuing involvement of the music room with the glass wrapping the corner, um, um, which led to uh, a discussion about that and the other elements of the music room. Um, we're just gonna... So, and then in that glass element, we've sort of integrated the mural and outdoor art. Um, there were some questions about the sill height for the glass and bringing it up for the sake of um, 
durability, having it right at the ground, um, this ease of cleaning. Um, there was questions about how far around the corner the glass should return, and we feel we could probably do less than is shown here and still get the effect that we need aesthetically and allow a little bit of light in from the west side. Um, this doesn't show that there would be a column at the corner, but it would be slender and, uh, you know, basically blend in with the articulation of the mullions. Um, it was generally decided that the art should be as discussed down at the music room rather than up where kids couldn't interact with it and walk right up to it. And then this expression on the media center of the vertical stripes of either masonry or single skin metal panel uh, was generally decided should echo what we have shown and was kind of liked a little bit more at the gym. So those are some of the things that we are going to be working on in terms of the general building design. Um, the Also, we had a lot of samples of masonry products for the exterior palette. Um, we had a whole bunch of versions of the lighter uh, white masonry. Um, there was uh, one particular blend that uh, several people like, but it was maybe a little too dark. And so we're gonna go back to our suppliers and manufacturers and maybe get a few more samples that are warmer and but and maybe a little bit lighter, but not light enough that they show all of the discoloration and dirt as a building weathers um, and then bring a palette back in front of you so we can continue to uh, get close to what we wanna see. Um, actually, I'm gonna go to um, another We're just gonna walk around the building a little bit. Another change that was made this week, uh, discussed with uh, Kathy, you have your hand. I hope I didn't walk away from what you were gonna ask about. I, I can ask it just up on the, uh, on the library, the media center, you still have the square for a potential mural. And I think we talked about removing that. So I just was gonna make that as a comment. Um, absolutely true. Uh, we did, we do have that up there and, um, we uh, are going to remove it. You know, this expression of a frame for art that isn't there is going to go away. Um, but, uh, you know, for the sake of, well, no, that's okay. Honestly, that, was yeah. my, that was my only comment. Thanks. So the palette and composition of the, uh, and, and then as, as we're zooming around, please note that this site plan uh, is a little bit old. And as we get into the other half of the discussion, we can talk about the updates, but what is rendered here is an iteration ago. Um, the uh, composition layout of the uh, exterior facade at the classroom remains largely the same. Uh, one of the changes that I did wanna to bring to the attention of the committee is to this point, we have been showing a stair from the mechanical room to the roof for uh, Rupert and his staff to use. Um, we have, for the sake of creating more room in the mechanicals room, uh, moved the stair to the stair two, we're calling it. It's the south stair uh, at the entrance from the bus loop. And that brings this stair expression to the roof. Um, architecturally, it, it does a few good things, we think. Uh, one, it brings a little glass higher uh, that will allow light to get into the circulation space on the third floor. And it's also a nice point to um, sort of start to break up the language of the classroom edition uh, before you get to the larger volumes of the public spaces, the gym, um, cafeteria and stuff like that. Um, in terms of a cost change, it, it should be pretty close to neutral. We already owned the stair to the roof, um, but as we get into DD, we'll see that flesh itself out. Uh, Sean, you have a question? Yeah, just really a quick one. Is that a, um, on the third floor, is, is that a window um, next to where the stairs are? And remind me what space that is. So this is the mechanical room. Um, that is a louver, so it will be uh, not transparent. Uh, it's intake air for the mechanical room. Uh, okay. Uh, it's probably oversized in this um, rendering because there there is no combustion happening in this mechanical space. Uh, um, and it might not need it uh, on this elevation at all, but as drawn right here, we are leaving space for a louver, which would be uh, 
probably the same color as the metal of the windows. And okay, thank just you. to let it blend in, we put an accent panel next to it. And then moving around to the front of the building, um, here is a, a more recent expression of the gym volume. And then, uh, you know, it was widely discussed that the media center and the gym, uh, you know, from various points on the site as you approach and use the buff loops, well, you will be able to see both of those volumes. And so the language of the two of them should be similar, if not the same. Um, and so we are going to continue to look at um, adjusting the volume uh, of, of the media center and the expression. And then another comment that we received that we are looking at is that we are getting to the point where on um, the gym, uh, you're looking at uh, a good amount of undifferentiated brick. So we're gonna look at some patterning and maybe some corbeling and some texture or, that would uh, you know, just uh, break it up a little bit. Uh, the same extends to you know some of the walls on the uh, I mean, administration space. Uh, Paul, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just have a couple of questions. So some of the road roofs, just be clear, so I understand some of the roofs are pitched and some of them are flat roofs. Is that accurate? That is, that is correct. Okay. Um, yeah, not a huge fan of flat roofs, but I think that's an economic thing, right? And then on the gym, those big blank walls, are they mm -hmm. crying? Are they crying out for art? You just said you're going to do some corbeling and some differentiation of the brick. Is that what's... Or do you, do you think there'll be some demand for something else that goes there because it's like a giant white slate there? Uh, uh, yes, I think there there will be demand for either art, if if that uh, is deemed to be appropriate in a, a location, or or some architectural expression that you know does not render this as you know the back of the building a large blank wall. You, yeah, the comment is spot on with what was discussed it, it's getting these yeah. this is a large volume it's a big wall yeah. uh, you know as part of this drawing it's not that big but when you're standing there it's going to be big so uh we, we certainly know that this has to be mitigated differentiated uh some sort of expression or detail worked in thank you um that is margaret um, the, so uh, it's interesting looking at it today. I'm, I'm assuming that you're going to have some benches and other sort of kinds of seating here that are part of the further landscape development. Um, is, is uh, that, absolutely. Absolutely. Is that something there that's going to, we're going to address in DD? Yes. Uh, th this, um, and then when we get to the slide plans you can see some of it but it is not all there but there is a bicycle rack right in the foreground of this image there is another one uh over north of the music room there are going to be benches there is a level of detail of site furniture and furnishings that is one not developed and two not shown in this yeah yeah not right in the model mm -hmm. okay yeah that, i figured that was the case thank you yep Tim, just to build on Paul's question on the gym, um, I, I think you're going to tell us we, we want to meet again, but my question when you come in with some choices is, um, I feel like I'm always the person who raises costs. If there are less expensive or, or zero costs, so if the differentiated, and then trade-offs, so if we differentiated the brick with the um, UMass has a couple of these where a couple of bricks stick out and they're a different, slightly different color. Um, I don't know whether that's a labor cost expense. And then if we were leaving space for a potential mural, do we have to do anything? Is it better not to do anything to it? Because um, I saw the way the Fort River mural is attached. It's just kind of ratcheted. It, it, it makes it a it can be this mural now and some point in the future could be another. So just when you bring it back to us, bring us that kind of information, because I don't know enough as, about materials and surfaces to know what um, removing the big white, pure white or one undifferentiated color would mean. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, there there is a, a world of things that we can do in terms of pattern within the same color and using different colors, and they all have slightly different cost implications. So as we present and discuss them, uh, we will provide all that information in relative terms, uh, you know. Yeah, and I, I'm not even sure with the UMass buildings, if you, I'm not sure I like what I'm seeing, but I did see that they broke up a big red wall with a colorful brick that sticks out, um, mm -hmm. you know, some, something that just didn't make it look like a, a, a wall. Sean. And I'll probably be the boring one. Um, Rick said something when we did the looking at the materials that, you know, people are sometimes afraid of a plain, you know, plain surface nowadays. Um, in some ways, there's so much detail going around going on in other parts of the building that having some sort of like sections that are just kind of not so you know not so much going on it, it almost adds to the building i worry if we go too do too much that it, it's going to make it too much you know too chaotic like i like having that sort of backdrop from this view um, of sort of a solid background and replicating that on the library side i think would look nice from the front so just that would be my input if when we start thinking about ways to differentiate it that we just don't go too far because there is so much going on with other parts of the building. Yeah, I think I said the same thing, Sean, that I like plain, yeah. plain, plain is often a preference, but Paul? Yeah, I think my point was that when you see a big blank slate like that, people will say, oh, we can put something there. And I think as a committee, if we're settling on that a blank wall or a wall that is an architectural feature in and of itself, which is what I'm thinking is sufficient, we should just because I think we will be asked, oh, can't we put our, a, a mural there? And I don't think that that's necessarily the best use of that space necessarily. So I think just we need to be prepared for that kind of, that we should have an, a thoughtful discussion like, no, we don't want a mural there instead of like saying, oh, that's an idea. Okay. Any other comments on this? Um, and they, you know, the last building committee, subcommittee meeting was in person. So we're not gonna have videos of the actual meeting, but what Tim's bringing us are the materials we were looking at with whatever changes we decided on. So just so people understand there's potentially in the packet for that meeting are more choices. And now we've gotten to where we made some choices. Should I move to the site discussion? Yeah, I think so. I'm not seeing any hands. So here we see uh, the site plan as presented uh, this week. Um, just as uh, the iteration before, um, still had separate playgrounds, uh, two with the uh, open play space in between, um, displayed basketball courts and an area of outdoor planting gardens and an outdoor classroom. And then the most current site plan, the playground is combined. Um, for one continuous space of the play surface that will have structured play equipment and some space left over for free play. Uh, the basketball court, um, the two single hoops were turned to face each other. Uh, so you could have a, a full court game, although this is larger than a typical full court basketball court, but a lot of other things will happen on this outdoor hardscape. Um, the two full court basketball courts to the east of the building were pushed together. And then there are the outdoor planter gardens and the outdoor classroom structure. Um, in this plan, they're moved a little bit further apart. There were some comments from the staff that uh, in the last version, they may have been a bit too close to each other and that there's a very good chance or a hundred percent chance that both of them would be used by classes at the same time. So a, a little bit more separation to prevent distraction and overlap would be better. Um, and then there was a lot of good discussion about um, how uh, the site would operate and drop off and pick up. 
Um, move one more slide. Oh, I, I should bring up, we had a few renderings, uh, images that would show in concept what the outdoor classroom and a few of the other uh, areas would be like here you are southeast of the building looking at the shade structure it's a little over 500 square feet which is you know, it's a little more than half of a indoor classroom uh, but obviously there's no walls there's no storage uh, so a typical class size uh, on loose seating could fit under this uh, and be in the shade uh, but this is about the level of um, structure that we would be looking at. Uh, this is a uh, heavy timber posts and columns uh, with a uh, metal roof uh, frames. Uh, here's another view of the planter garden. Uh, you can see that the outdoor structure for the classroom is over to the left in front of the building. Uh, here you are looking to the east from the end of the bus loop um, and then beyond the planter gardens, you can see uh, the full court basketball court to the left and then the tree line in front of the Fort River in the distance. Here is uh, a view of the forest floor garden, uh, which is at the east end of the site. Um, there are saplings planted, there's a stone dust path and wood chips. Um, and then you can see logs that would be reused from the site for benches and uh, learning opportunities in the forest floor garden. And then here is um, a view of the learning area at the uh, rain garden east of the half court basketball carts. Um, so it's a depression with a meadow mix and other grasses. Um, this area will contain water in a storm event. The rocks will allow you to walk through. Uh, they're rendered a little bit larger than they will be. Uh, there will be stepping stones. These sort of look like boulders, but, um, and then you can see the athletic fields to the north beyond. Um, and then there will be a framed low platform uh, where a class can stand and have an accessible surface to look into the rain garden and see what's going on in terms of species, um, rocks, all of the stuff that is growing there. And then one more change that we brought to the attention of the subcommittee is um, we're doing some um, tweaks to the um, southern drop off loop. Um, it was sized so that a bus and any vehicle that would be expected to um, deliver to the service area uh, would be able to make the turn comfortably. Uh, but, you know, as we got into it uh, in, in fine detail with our traffic engineers and landscape architects, you know, if, if a bus or even a car were parked in just the wrong place, it would be difficult for a large vehicle to move. So we're just going to adjust the geometry such that two large vehicles can turn next to each other since it is a two lane drop off loop. And then there's also considerations as there are areas that are going to be fire lane. So we just want to make sure that we have everything controlled. And then one more item that we are continuing to work on based on discussion from last week. Uh, it was brought up <laughs> that there are uh, a certain population of students that may need more time, uh, you know, as they transition in and out of the building. Uh, and so this is a technical drawing in process. So uh, I apologize if it's not as legible as some of the others, but what this shows is we are starting to look at introducing an area outside of the main entrance with a mountable curb uh, where four cars, give or take, um, could pull off to the side and have, um, and not obstruct the flow of drop off or pickup traffic. Um, this would be um, a different surface than the parking lot and drive aisle itself. It would probably be the same as the plaza. Um, and there would be staff outside to control who can pull in and who could not. Um, but uh, this extension with a mountable curb of the plaza would allow cars to pull off and not obstruct the process and give those who need it a little more time to transition into the building. Yeah, just just <clears throat> excuse me, just to add to that, um, this is 
for parents bringing students or their children in versus the van drop off that we've also identified. So, yeah, the van drop off is right here, uh, and even closer is the parent drop off. Yep, yeah. and then bus and general student drop off is at the loop here. Are there any questions or comments for those who weren't there for, I mean, this discussion actually happened in the morning and then in the building and then continued into the afternoon. Allison. Yeah, I just wanna say thank you because I know that reworking things is not easy. And I think the symmetry of that is just beautiful where children on, um, on the van drop off and the parent drop off they're they're symmetrically mm -hmm. the, the staff can be kind of near each other i think that's beautiful thank you very much well yeah i just want i thought that was a, an elegant solution so thank you for listening to allison's concerns and, and tammy's concerns and that was that's a really i like that a lot uh, the other thing i want to i was thinking about um so the town, we talk about bike racks, but the town also has a bike share program that is now going through some transition. But when those, when we, if we were to put a bike share thing here, it would need electricity. So it's just something we might want to start to think about um, where, if we were to put that there, if this, we're continue with that, because these are electric bikes that need to have a charging station. So we typically tie them into something. So. Paul, um, when, when we're talking about that, does it make sense to bring it closer to the building or closer to the, I'm just trying to think who might be using them? Um, it, well, it'd be to the general public, so it's not necessarily, yeah. yeah, so I'm not sure if it's a good, if we even thought about it for the, as a potential location, but I just, I just, it just occurred to yeah, me. Yeah, so thank you. Plan. Yeah. So we are, we will be putting, um, I think all we're doing, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, is conduit for, for vehicle charging stations. I don't think we're including the charging stations themselves within mm -hmm. the parking lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know correct. if we've identified those, have we, Tim? Uh, not on this drawing, but they are identified, but that the location can move. It's more a function of reducing the length to the uh, services than... So you're saying for the conduit and everything to the building? Yes. Yeah, so well, it's from a separate service over here. Okay. So I don't I don't know, Paul. I mean, it's a parking lot. I don't know, you know, if you could build on utilizing the conduit for the Yeah, we could charging I mean, stations. So so typically what we do is we put them we try to adjacent put them adjacent to uh, bus stops because it's like okay. the last the last mile that people go on these electric mm -hmm. bikes. Um, and then usually there is electricity oftentimes at bus stops. So we just tag into that or tag into a uh, street light. I'm not sure if it should be on this location, if it should be out on the street, but just. Yeah, yeah thank I you. Would, if, it, if it was a community use more than a school use, would it make sense to have it toward the athletic fields? And it, it might, just yeah. a question. Yep. Where, wherever there's already electricity, I would think. And what they, yeah. what they have is a concrete pad <laughs> that they put them on. There also can be a consideration that after you've struggled to reduce your plug loads in the building, now you're connecting vehicle charging stations and now electric bikes to your building load. And what does that do to your energy usage? Mm. So there's an element of thought about what way you pull this stuff off of uh, there too. Good point. Well, when we do that, Rick, um... Right, we're we're providing conduit and and um, electricity to the backstop, right? And that's not being tied into the building. Is that right, correct? That, that, we're looking at that being a different connection. So I'm just wondering if it, as as we think about all these auxiliary site requirements, that we look at look at pulling off of that area, which is where Tim's cursor is right now. Maybe that makes the most sense so that it doesn't draw from the building, even for the uh, charging stations for vehicles. Um, oh, don't want to, you know, go over, over yeah. 
now, yeah. but it can be an unintended consequence. Yeah. Jonathan, your hand was up. Was this on this? Hey, it was just the, the notion that if the bike share is on the site, maybe it's more appropriate for it to be by the playing fields. Yeah, I had this. My hand was up for the same reason, um, getting it closer to there and using that separate electrical connection, <laughs> you know, getting it off the building. Any other comments on the site plan? I don't see any hands up. So I I think thank you very much. And I, I do thank you. You you're showing us on Friday things that were raised on Monday in design. So it's very responsive. I re really thank you for doing it. Um, um, did we want to talk about next meetings now? With, or I'm sorry, Margaret, I don't remember where we are. Uh, no, no that, that, that would be next meetings. And when we have the, everyone has a hold on their calendar for the full committee meetings, but, um, Tim, you wanted to talk about some additional um, subcommittee uh, or design development meetings. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, so the building design, uh, we've gotten certainly a lot of good input, and we thought that the in-person meetings were very productive, at, but we still have a lot to do. Um, so I am hoping that we can schedule another in-person building subcommittee meeting the week of august 31st if possible obviously um there are a lot of calendars involved with the people on the screen here so there's some but um uh then we can come back with what we talked about in terms of modifications this past week uh also we have not shown any interior space development in quite some time so um we we've spent a lot of uh time on the exterior and i think we're making certainly good progress for dv but um there's a lot going on inside the building too that we want to share and talk about. Um, so for the building, uh, that would be two weeks. Uh, for the site, we feel that it could be longer because we have a lot of good, clear information and our team, uh, our landscape architect and our civil engineer have quite a bit of work to do. So we think uh, at the end of August or early September where we could really start to talk about playground design would be more appropriate for a site subcommittee meeting. Um, and then uh, the third subcommittee sustainability, uh, we would very much like to have a meeting, but we are still unfortunately in a holding period with that tradition of the code with all of the new energy requirements is in effect now. Uh, but DOER has yet to publish the modeling guidelines that will allow us to say what certainty that what we have designed and document will allow us to meet that. So there could be slight tweaks to the envelope, uh, basically the type of how much insulation we need. Um, and then there could also be some changes to the mechanical systems design, mostly programming uh, to get demand control and ventilation, um, uh, but possibly some actual physical changes to the design. Uh, but we, we can't really say with any degree of certainty uh, what those changes would need to be until we get more clarity from the state. So uh, it, it would be, uh, we can't really suggest a time for the sustainability unless there's another major topic that we wanna discuss. So uh, yeah, so to, to recap, building we'd like to meet in two weeks, uh, site we'd like to meet in a month or so. And then site, we would like to meet as soon, uh, for sustainability, we'd like to meet as soon as possible, but we don't know when that is. So yeah. Tim, I just, when you said building, you actually said August 31st, but you meant- oh, Nope, I meant July meant, 31st. You meant Thank July, you. correct? Sorry. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I just want to correct that. So you're talking yeah. about the, two weeks. you just said, it's in two weeks. So, um, well, I'm not gonna poll people right now. So it's the week that starts on uh, July 24th is the week you're talking about, correct? Uh, I was talking about the week that starts July 31st because July, if, if it was early in the week of July 24th, that would be 
one week from now, essentially. And we just want to make sure that we have. Okay, so, that, so the week that starts July 31st is the first four days of August also. Correct? Right. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm, just, I'm yes. just looking at my calendar. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I will send out um, whether there are date preferences. Um, you came out. Um, do you have days that work better for you to come out? Do you want us uh, to send you something after this, Kathy, after we? No, I, I will send out. So if you send me the days that work best for you, then I sure. will, then I will poll people. Um, so just people should be looking at their calendars for Monday the 31st through Friday the 4th. Um, and um, I, I actually have some restrictions that week. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we'll send out some dates. And we probably would be looking at a solid two, two plus hours, maybe. Um, happy to bring in coffee and donuts or coffee and whatever, <laughs> or, or we can meet whenever um, or later in the day if that works for people, but we'll get, we'll get you our schedule, but we're, it, it is a chunk of time. I think we want to present um, further design considerations for the exterior and then start talking about the interior. Okay, so I, I will send them out. And with Mike's return, you know, the only, I have some restrictions, but Mike's back and he was on that subcommittee. So, um, so I will, I will poll everyone. Yeah, that would be great. And, and having Allison and Tammy as well, just because as we start thinking about um, the interior and having their input would be really helpful too. And I think, as everyone knows, these subcommittees, particularly when the design team is coming out, they're wide open if people want to come to them. And if, if we've been jointly posting them in case seven of us show up <laughs> um, with a quorum. So um, it's it's an open invite, but we 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 need a core group to at least react to what what we're seeing. And we're not making decisions. We are ask it, we ask as many questions as we offer final. So anything else, Tim and Donna, you're also trying to set up a meeting with, um, and this is with staff that you've got to go before the planning board and the conservation commission. So you're doing a, you're trying to set up a pre-meeting with internal staff, is that correct? Yeah, um, did I lose Paul? Oh no, there he is, sorry. I don't know, I lost you, Paul. Um, it, it's like a design review team yeah. or technical. Yeah. So yeah. we bring we bring all the you know fire department, building inspection services, DPW, everybody into one room, and we go through the project. And everybody understands what the um, permit path is, um, and if they see any sort of major um, problems right off the bat. But it really is about facilitating permitting and making it the path is as seamless as possible. Yeah, it's wonderful for everyone to hear each other's um, goals or needs so that one's not making a decision in a vacuum and and um, taking everyone's uh, considerations and needs. It, it It's a wonderful approach to this. So I think we threw out some dates to Dave mm -hmm. uh, Zomax. So. Yeah, they have a coordinator who will work on that, everybody's schedule for you. Yeah. And... As far as going to conservation commission, separate, I'm assuming. Um, oh my God, how did I lose her name? Who's the Aaron? Aaron. 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 How did I totally? Aaron, I see yeah. Her, yeah <laughs> uh, would be part of the de design review or de yeah, development she, she, review she's team. She's part of the team too. Yeah. Um, but we will be planning. Uh, we weren't planning going to conservation commission. Um, during design development until we are ready to submit the um, NOI, but but we'll we're it would be great to get her input. We're right where we said we were going to be when we last met with her. So mm -hmm. now we're just doing all the documentation. Yeah, so I think that meeting will help clarify what their expectation is with your expectations. So you're all on the same page early yep, in perfect. the process. Yeah, it's great. It's really helpful. Any other? Yeah, the only other thing, Kathy, um, uh, is it the disability 
commission or, mm -hmm. or are they, are they part of this as well, Paul? So the, the building uh, commission, the, the, this group does bring up this, the ADA stuff. Um, if they need, if, if there is going to be a visit with the disability access advisory committee, there is someone from the planning department that support that provides staff support for that commission. And I think we were saying we were going to do that, Kathy. You were going to maybe make an introduction yeah, well, or something. At one point, Paul, an email came in from dis the disability access. So I, I should just talk to you about how best to, when best to bring them in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I think it's best to go through our normal process. Yeah. Okay. We just want to make sure we um, hear everyone's comments now mm -hmm. um Absolutely. So we, yeah so it would be really helpful <clears throat> and, and the library just went through meeting with them the, the library designers so um but they they it is a meeting that they like to have yeah no it's it's perfect so are there any other comments questions um scheduling so if not i'm going to open it up for public comment um and we do have public. So any one of the attendees who would like to join, um, I will bring you in. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Welcome. Is, to, thank you, Tony Cunningham. Um, I had a few questions. I was wondering about the size of the playground and the half court hardscape. How do they compare to other projects, school projects in the state on a per student square footage? They seem huge to me, but I would need the expertise of Danisco to know whether these spaces are a reasonable size or if it would be logical to reduce them. I wondered if you could look into the relative pros and cons of using engineered wood fiber instead of poured in place. And some of those factors would be uh, first and lifetime cost, the chemical makeup and safety of materials, surface heat, et cetera. Uh, with the proposal for artificial turf at the high school, there was a lot of discussion about um, the harm from, I know you cut artificial turf from this project, but there was discussion about poured in place also being harmful. And uh, so I just wanna make sure that we're registering that question now and not putting it in without fully looking into the repercussions. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask about was I sent an email asking about the walking route that, for example, a parent and child might take from a parked car in the westernmost or center parking aisle to the front of the building. And I was wondering if the logical route would be for them to walk through the drive um, you know, behind parked cars, or if there's a plan for a pedestrian path down the center of the parking lot, linking it up to the center, uh, to the crosswalks. So I know when I'm walking in like the Whole Foods or Target parking lot, some of them have paths between the parked cars, um, which feels a lot safer when I'm walking with my kids than having to walk down the middle of the driveway. Um, and then lastly, in May, you had scheduled a meeting to discuss the library and the location of the steam room, but the meeting has was canceled. I don't know if you had that meeting at a later stage. I was wondering if there has been a change in the location of the steam room. Um, if I recall correctly, the librarian suggested putting them adjacent so that they could use the steam room during library class and not require additional staffing to monitor the students if there were windows between the library and the steam room and they were next door to each other and a door access. So I was wondering if that change has happened or if that discussion has happened. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And I think there are answers to some of these. So maybe what we'll do is um, to the extent we there have been decisions, we will get them out to people. Um, so. Uh, Maria, I have brought you in. Thank you, Maria Kapicki, South Amherst. Um, first, I want to thank Denisco um, for adding those, what I'm thinking of as a little bit uh, like short-term parking at that southernmost end of the loop. Um, I won't speak for CPAC, the Special Education Parent Advisory Group, but the parents in that group um, 
uh, this was this is an, a very important issue for them. So thank you for incorporating that, and thank you to Allison and Tammy for advocating for that at the site visit. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, in terms of the electrical for some of the the community use bikes, I think that is a great idea. And uh, my understanding is that there's going to be I don't the technical term I don't have, but the 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 plugs basically for field lighting and for comfort station, you know, all of that stuff and then in the north area won't won't be set up and ready to use, but it seems to me that that would be a nice tie-in. It would also, uh, uh, as you point out, have it be on a different um, metering system from the building. So that seems to make a lot of sense. I want to second um, Tony's comments. It just, it, it ways in general to minimize artificial and impervious surfaces, um, minimize parking. Um, I know that th some suggestions were made. I hope that there's still looking at, at, at different ways to decrease the amount of, um, uh, eliminate hopefully um, all, if, uh, if not most of the port in place for engineered wood fiber to decrease the amount of asphalt for parking, that big circle um, of the additional, the two half courts uh, that could maybe be have a smaller diameter anything that can help with that it'll help with stormwater drainage it will help with initial and maintenance costs um, and it will be far better for the environment so i hope we're thinking uh, always thinking of the environment and climate in all of these decisions that we're we're making um hopefully i i hope that i i don't know if it makes sense but it would seem that there's a lot to talk about with sustainability so even before uh we've got all these directions um from from state and federal levels uh it seems like there's a lot that could be talked about with sustainability um i know that the energy budget i'm not sure where we are with that part of the of the project uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Again, thank you very much for those changes. I'm sure they're going to be very appreciated for the parking. Oh, sorry. One other thing. I know that they did, um, uh, the, the CPAC parents also had concerns, um, uh, inside the building. And, um, I'm hoping that they're able to participate in the site visit that talks about that in a couple of weeks, that, that their concerns around observation and, transitioning once the kids come into the building, you know, at, at the beginning and end of the days with the the very busy uh, areas there in the foyer, if that can be addressed, I'm sure they would really want to be involved in that. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Bruce. Okay, can you hear me? We can. Uh-oh. I might have removed you. Sorry. We can hear you, Bruce. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. Okay. I'm back again. Yes. Okay. Um, I said uh, uh, all of what I, uh, my comments and contributions and so forth to the designs and so forth during the meetings uh, in the uh, uh, Fort River School earlier in the week. So I don't need to repeat that. But I just wanted to state publicly again how impressed I am with the design team and the committee's uh, way in which this project is being moved forward. Um, this is not always the way public buildings are handled, and it's not always possible to say repeatedly how satisfied uh, one as an observing member of the public is, but I think this is a project that is that way. And it should be said, um, I will say it. Thank you all very, very much. Um, finally, um, Kathy, I guess this is for you. Uh, um, the planning board for the last year now that I've been on it, the chair has read the list of attendees uh, somewhere around the beginning of the meeting. Um, and uh, I think it would be very helpful if we could do the same here. It's always good to know who else is in the audience. I mean, if it was a real public meeting, of course, you would walk in the door, you'd see what's, who's there. Uh, I think it would help everybody if uh, if everybody who was in the attendance knew who the other attendees were. And if that could be done, that would, 
I would I would appreciate it anyway. I'm not sure how who else might, but that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Um, and I should say thank you to all three of the public attendees and I um, who have been active and often and always uh, thinking about possible changes and options, which has been very useful. At least I'll speak for myself on that. Um, including the public comments, you know, that when people have sent us written comments, you should rest assured that I'm always sending, sending them forward. So it's not that they fell into a black hole. And I, one of the things I haven't done with copying all 13 of you is the amount of emails we get that I'm worried that we just inundate, but um, I do always send them forward. So I think um, unless someone has any remaining comments, um, we, M Margaret has been capturing uh, both in the minutes, but to the extent there are answers to some of these um, things that have raised, I can certainly do, for example, these attendee readout. Um, but if we have answers to some, Donna, then we can include them and make sure we flag them in the next meeting as well. So without seeing any other hands up except for Bruce, and I think that's just a remainder, um, I think we are adjourned at 9.33. Thank you all very much. See you soon. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>